Why do bad things happen to innocent people? It's a question I'll never have the answer to. Picture this. I was four years old and I had the best parents in the world. My mom was beautiful and she had the most caring eyes ever. And she smelled like an angel. She sang with me, played with me, and made the most amazing food. My dad was funny. He'd always pick me up and spin me around the room. Most of all, they loved each other. And I know they loved me. When I look back, I think about those happy moments. Life was perfect. Before I get to the really sad part of the story, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you do this in the next three seconds, someone is going to give you some really good news tomorrow. Hit that notification bell too. Simon, we're going to Thailand. We're going on vacation. My mom squealed one night while my dad lifted me into the air. I didn't really understand what vacation meant because I was really little, but they were really excited, so I just went with the flow. It was going to be my first time on a plane, and I was very excited. I had dozens of plane toys, and I'd seen them on TV and in the sky, but, but to actually sit inside of one of them? Oh boy. The day came, and I was jumping up and down with joy. We sat in the plane, and my mom gave me some toys to play with. You should have seen me when the plane took off. I was clapping and everything. It was hilarious. I remember it being a fun ride, and I was pretty much excited the whole time, until the plane suddenly went dark and started to shake. Don't worry, son, I think it's just turbulence, my dad said. My mom put her arm around me and told me that everything would be all right. But then the plane started to descend and the people started screaming. My mom blocked my eyes and I don't remember anything else after that. Hey, sweetie, are you awake? <laughs> Aw, open your eyes, precious. I heard an unfamiliar woman say. I opened my eyes. Who are you? I'm Nurse Sandra. What's your name, little one? Simon. Where's my mom and dad? I'm so sorry, sweetie. And I don't know if you can understand this, but the plane crashed and you are the only survivor. Your mommy and daddy are angels now, but they'll always be watching over you. I burst into tears and screamed for my mom and dad. I told the nurse to stop lying. I kicked and punched the pillows, but it was no use. It was true. I was an orphan. When I was strong enough to leave the hospital, I was told that none of my relatives wanted me. That was sad because I had lots of aunts and uncles who were pretty well off. So I was sent to a foster home. Welcome, honey. You're such a sweetie pie. A woman said as I was dropped at the house. She introduced herself as Molly and took me up to a small bedroom, which I'd be sharing with two other boys. I remember this being a happy place, despite the sadness I felt after losing my parents. Molly treated all of us like we were her own children, and I had many fun moments there. She always comforted me when I was feeling sad and I'll always think of her as my second mother. But when I was about 15 years old, they reduced the funding she received as a foster mom and she could no longer afford to take care of so many children. Simon, you're getting older and it might be better for you to be with a more financially stable family, one which can adopt you formally and put you through college. She said one night, but, but I don't want to leave. I know and I understand. But we have to think about what's best for you. You're a really smart young man, and you need people who are in a better financial situation than I am. Listen, a really nice family is interested in adopting you. The mom and dad are both lawyers, and they have twin daughters. If you move in with them, you'll have everything. You can still come to visit me once in a while. Don't just think about the moment. Think about the future. After more speeches and persuasion, I finally agreed to meet this family that wanted to adopt me. Molly invited them over for lunch while the other kids were at school. I stayed home that day. They pulled up in an expensive BMW, and when they got out of their car, I thought they looked like two of the most boring people I'd ever seen. Good afternoon, young man. My name is Alonzo Middlecroft. And I'm Gwendolyn Middlecroft. We are very pleased to meet you. I tried to be very polite throughout lunch. They discussed boring things like their jobs and then arranged with Molly for me to move that weekend. I won't bore you with the boring details about the move, so I'll just fast forward to the Saturday they came to pick me up to take me to my new home. Their neighborhood was pretty far from Molly's house, but it was in a really posh area. They pulled up in front of a three-story house and helped me to carry my bags inside. Their twin daughters were waiting at the entrance. Hi, I'm Carla. And I'm Caroline. Nice to meet you, Carla and Caroline. That's enough talking for today, girls. Please go to your rooms, Mrs. Middlecroft said. Huh? I thought. Now, Simon, before we take you upstairs to your room, we've got to explain a few things. 
We have some rules in this house that must be adhered to, or else there will be serious consequences. We have compiled our rules into a book, and we expect you to finish reading it by tomorrow night," she said. Maybe you're thinking she handed me a little booklet, but no, it was the size of an encyclopedia. And if you're not sure what that is, ask your parents. You want me to read this in one day? Yes. Now I'll show you to your room, and you can get changed for dinner," she said. She took me up to my room, and I'll admit it was pretty nice. I sat on the bed, and she screamed. No, that's rule number twenty-four. No sitting on the bed with your outside clothes. I stood up, and she continued. Oh my gosh! Rule number seventy says no shoes in the bedroom. I think you need to read the rule book before dinner. We'll be waiting for you downstairs when you're done. She left the room, and I sat back down on the bed. Who were these crazy people? I opened the book and started reading. One, wake up at five a.m. every day. Two, there is to be no communication until seven a.m. Three. Always say please and thank you. Four. Listen to everything we say. Five. Wash your clothes on Wednesdays. Six. You have a designated spot in the living room. Do not sit anywhere else. Seven. Showers should be not longer than ten minutes. Twenty-four. No sitting on the bed with your outside clothes. Seventy. No shoes in the bedroom. There were almost seven hundred rules, and I was really lucky that I was a fast reader, or I wouldn't have eaten that night. I was able to make it downstairs for dinner. My new parents and their daughters were already sitting at the table. I went to sit in the only available spot. No, no, no! Mrs. Middlecroft said. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Rule number fifty-seven: If you're late for dinner, you have to stand. I'm sorry. Good. Don't let it happen to you again. I'm sorry, Mrs. Middlecroft. There is to be no speaking at the dinner table. When I went to bed that night, I really hoped that I'd wake up the next morning realizing that this had all been a dream, but it wasn't. I woke up because an alarm clock made extremely loud noises next to me. I shut it off. It was five o'clock in the morning. The rule book said I had to get up that early, but I wasn't exactly sure what I was supposed to be doing. I started getting ready for school, then stayed in my room until seven. When I got downstairs, everyone was smiling and having breakfast like pretty normal people. Hi, Simon. I hope you had a good first night. One of the twins said as she winked at me. Uh, yes, it was great. Thanks. I was happy to go to school that day because it made me realize that at least one part of my life hadn't gone crazy. I was happy I didn't have to go to the same private school as Caroline and Caroline. When I got home later, my new parents were already back. I greeted them, then went up to my room to get changed. After a while, I heard a faint knock on my door. I opened it and saw both twins standing there. They looked startled. Hey Simon, sorry we haven't welcomed you to our family yet. In case you haven't realized it by now, our parents are crazy. We had to sneak in here to talk to you. Yes, if they find us, we'll be in big trouble. We just wanted to let you know that you don't need to worry. Everything will be fine if you follow the rules. Then they left just like that. The next few weeks were weird. When I was alone with the girls, they were cool, but in front of their parents, they were like robots. I still had a hard time remembering all the rules, so I ended up getting punished a few times. Once I got punished for leaving my bedroom window open when I went to school, so I had to scrub the floors. Another time, I used the wrong spoon to eat some ice cream, so I wasn't allowed to eat desserts for a week. Then one day, children, we're going away for the weekend. We have to go visit your grandpa. He's in the hospital. Really, mom? Yes. I have created another rule book for you to follow while we're away. We will call you a few times to make sure that everything is okay. Okay. Then they left. How lucky! It was crazy because we could all finally be ourselves. Caroline decided to throw a party and started calling all of her friends. By six on Saturday afternoon, the house was filled with crazy teenagers, and by midnight, they were all dancing, screaming, and drinking. The twins had totally transformed. I had never seen them like this, and I couldn't believe they were bold enough to do this. What if their parents came back home early? Anything could happen. What would they do to us? Anyway, by the end of the night, we were totally wiped out. Somehow, the three of us ended up falling asleep in the guest bedroom. I guess we must have been super tired because we didn't wake up until we heard Mr. Middlecroft screaming at the top of his lungs. What is going on here? Why are you all sleeping here like this? Daddy, it's not what it looks like. The house is a mess. Did you all have a party? Yes, Dad. Sorry. They've never done this before. I think it's that boy's fault. We'll have to punish him. Mrs. Middlecroft said to her husband. They made me go to my room and they handcuffed me to my desk.、Uh-oh. You're going to be here for a long time with no food or water. 
Mr. Middlecroft glared at me. I couldn't believe I was being punished for something I didn't even plan. Well, luckily for me, and unfortunately for them, I knew how to get myself out of handcuffs. I learned it with the other kids back at Molly's house when we'd found an old pair on the street. I freed myself and decided I had to find a way to get out of that house. I packed my backpack with a few things and decided I'd wait until about 2 in the morning to make my escape. When it was 2, I opened the door quietly and walked down the stairs. As I got to the door, it looked like Carlo was sneaking back in. Where are you going? She asked. Where have you been? That's a secret. Hey, are you running away? That's like, so cool. Can I come? We're coming. I'll go wake up Caroline. I didn't even have a chance to answer. Of course I didn't want these two girls slowing me down, but could I really leave them here? In about 15 minutes, the twins tiptoed down the stairs with their stuff, and we left the house. We walked for a while until Caroline said, So, uh, where are we going? I'm still sleepy. Are we going to, like, sleep on the street now? Well, we could always go to a hotel. Carla replied. You have money? Yeah, I stole a few thousands from Dad's safe. Well, that was lucky. We checked into a hotel and ordered a whole bunch of snacks. We turned on the television and watched movies until we fell asleep. The next morning, the twins had about 40 missed calls from their parents. What are you going to do? Carla asked. We'll just make them suffer a little longer. I think if we spend about a week away from home, they'll regret what they did to Simon. And maybe they'll throw away their stupid rule book. Caroline answered. We stayed away for two weeks instead of just one to make sure they'd have a change of heart. Would you believe that it actually worked? When we finally decided to go home, they ran towards us and hugged us. Mrs. Middlecroft cried and cried, saying that she thought we had been kidnapped or hurt. We didn't get into any trouble, and now we have fewer rules. They apologized to me for treating me so badly, but honestly, I hope time will fly so I can go to college and leave this place forever.